Hi there and welcome back. On today's video, we are going to separate a mixture of methanol and acetone from each other using a pressure swing distillation. I am going to show you step by step guide on how this can be achieved. But before we start, we need to first understand at least the basic concept of what we will be dealing with. It's important to note that acetone and methanol are both solvents, with acetone being categorized as a ketone and methanol can be classified as an alcohol. This two can be mixed together and they will form a homogeneous mixture or binary mixture. Uses of acetone, it's commonly used in nail polish and methanol can be found in beer, wine or spirits. The mixture of this two can be used industrially as a solvent extract agent or for cleaning purposes. The mixture of acetone and methanol is a binary homogeneous isotope. What is an isotope? It is a liquid mixture that has a constant boiling point whose vapor has the same composition as its liquid. And a binary compound is a chemical compound consisting of two exactly different elements. Separation of this two can be achieved using pressure swing distillation, extractive distillation, and there's more research that has been explored. For the pressure swing distillation it's important to note that isotropic points of a binary system of acetone and methanol vary sensitively depending on the pressure changes. The aim is to achieve a pure acetone and methanol using two distillation columns operated at two different pressures. The first one will be operated at a low pressure and the second distillation column will be operated at a high pressure. The separation method that's going to be used this is called pressure swing distillation. It has been proved by research that pure compounds can be achieved using this method therefore we can expect to achieve pure acetone and pure ethanol. It's also important to note the boiling point for each product and their flash points since they are flammable. For the design, we are going to use a distillation column and a distillation column typically consists of a column itself, the condenser and the reboiler. In chemical engineering, a distillation column, it is a key component that's used for separation, but also it's important to notice that it can be also a hazardous equipment if it's not well handled and can be a cost of fire explosion or it could collapse. Acetone and methanol are both solvents and are super highly flammable. These products can ignite and cause a huge fire or explosion. Heavy component and light components are very important and crucial to note when dealing with a distillation column. Heavy components are usually ones that has a low relative volatility or a higher molecular weight and usually they are found in the bottom product of the distillation column. In this case acetone it's the one with the lower volatility relative rate or higher molecular weight so we should expect it at the bottom but i think it's important to note that pressure also plays a huge role the light key component it's the one with the higher relative volatility or a lower molecular weight in this case methanol has 32.042 grams per mole and should be found at the top of the column again it's also important to notice that pressure plays a huge significant role so if the pressure of the column is low methanol will be found at the bottom and if it's high methanol will be found at the top. For methodology we can use cocoa tea to configure our reaction package or you could add it manually on your simulation. In this case we are dealing with only acetone and methanol. We want to separate them. You can use UniQuack as the thermodynamic mode set initially. Obviously you can always adjust according to what you achieve. In this case we do not need to configure cone since we do not have a reaction taking place. Okay let's start with the simulation. First I want to say thank you so much to the research that I used to help me achieve this simulation. Williams' research for the pressure swing distillation was also very helpful. Also, Tan and Durfram's research helped me a lot. And the cocoa simulation, of course, which is utilized. Okay, let us start the simulation. For the simulation, I might use my um, computer audio. So if you hear some background noise disturbing you, it might be my laptop fan. And for that, I do apologize. Okay, let's start with the simulation. For the simulation, I am going to do it based on the research that has already been developed. I'm just going to show you how to do it step by step. Um, so we don't have to really calculate the of stages or the feed stage at this point. We're just going to make everything based on research. So I'm going to start by first during my simulation. We'll start by the separator, which is the flesh column, the distillation column. I'll place it here. Include the streams. So we are basically going to have the inlet stream. Let me just negate the column. From the top connector is, let's just connect it there. 
now that we've started with the first column and we connected the streams, a key step that I left out right now is to add the property package. To do this, you can either do it either way. The first step you could do is to open the configure T and add your property packages, which is your methanol and acetone. Or you could just come to settings, add property package, add, select. I'm just going to add my acetone and methanol, which is already created, or you can create new. Either way, it's okay. In this scenario, we won't have any reactors, so we do not need any um, reaction package. Just going to exit, so everything is saved. Great. Now, let us start with the initial guesses and tell Coco simulation what is it that we want. I'm going to start with the feed. For the feed, we have one atmospheric pressure. Temperature here can range anything between 320 and 328 would be ideal. I'm just going to take 328. The mole fraction here, we can say the mixture is at 50% each component. So we have 0.5 acetone and that of methanol. The flow rate here, we can go with 540. Everything looks great. Great. Since we have a 0.5 fraction of each component we will have flow rates of 270 each we are at liquid phase everything is looking great perfect now we could also rename our stream and call it feed stream the next stream that i would like to edit it's the distillate so the distillate, I'm just going to say D1. We could say the pressure won't variate too much from that of the initial. So we could roughly one or lower. So I'm just going to say 0 0.9. Temperature here, we could still keep it at that initial temperature state. Acetone. Okay, now this is going to be very interesting. I want to explain what I'm trying to achieve here. So this is going to be very interesting on what compositions are going to separate and at what stage. Ideally, in a typical distillation column, remember that a heavy component is that which has a lower volatility or a higher molecular weight. In this case, acetone has a molecular weight of 58 and therefore has a higher molecular weight compared to that of methanol. Under normal circumstances, we expect to see acetone separating at the bottom and methanol at the top. Since methanol is the light key, hence it will separate at the top and acetone at the bottom. But also something that is very interesting is that pressure plays a very important key role in a distillation column. At different pressures, your components will separate differently as well. So if we were to compute high pressure in this distillation column, you'll notice that Methanol will separate at the top, acetone at the bottom. But if we keep the pressure super low, as low as 0 0.02 bar, you'll notice that methanol will separate at the bottom and acetone will separate at the top. So don't get confused. Still keep your distillation theory intact. I hope that makes sense. So for the first distillation column, we first want to achieve a very strong percentage of methanol at the bottom. And on our second distillation column, that's where we want to achieve a strong percentage of acetone at the bottom. This stream, let's rename it to methanol. And we would like to achieve 0 0.994 at least of methanol at the bottom. And remember we said if we want to achieve methanol at the bottom, the pressure in the tank will have to be super low. So 0 0.01 would do. Temperature here, we can say um, we don't want to deviate too much. And remember, we don't really, really know the temperature that can be achieved here. So we can leave that out. Um, the flow rate here, we can say it won't deviate too much from the initial flow rate. So I'm just going to leave it like this. It. Now the distillate, for now, for the first distillation column, we want to achieve a very strong percentage of the methanol at the bottom. So in this case, we'll have a very small fraction of it at the top. So I'll say 0 0.25, that should be fair enough. Again, we don't really, really know the flow rate of the streams. This is just initial guesses. We are really, really not sure yet. Also, mind the units of the flow rate, kilomoles per hour. 
I don't really know the flow rate yet. So I'm just going to leave it out for now. I want to see if Coco will calculate that for us. Um, what else can we have here? Let's see. Great. Okay, kilomoles per hour. Note what I did a mistake there. It's supposed to be 540 here. Methanol, we said it won't deviate too much from the initial flow rate. Great. So we've computed the first three streams. Now let's edit the distillation column. For the pressure swing distillation, PSD, we are going to use simple distillation columns just at different pressures. So if the first pressure is high or low, then the other pressure will be high or low, the opposite of the other, depending on what we want to separate. For the operation, 52 stages, the feed is fed at 37. Thermodynamics values, configure all your thermodynamic values. Column spec. This part here is very interesting. If you regulate your pressures in your design, you can manipulate the streams what you want to achieve. But also, another thing you can do is you can also tell Coco what you want to achieve on your product streams. We want to achieve a fraction of 0.75 at the top of acetone for the first distillation column. And we want to achieve 0.994 or 5. Either way, we we'll do off methanol at the bottom. To get acetone at the top and methanol at the bottom, you have to regulate your pressures. So at high pressures, we are going to achieve acetone at the bottom, but at low pressures, we are going to achieve methanol at the bottom. 0.02 bars, Newton per meter squared, it's 2000. Great, everything's solved, let's see. Methanol at the bottom, perfect, we have 0 0.995. Distillate at the top, we have perfect. We achieved this fraction of 75 and 25. Feed, perfect, everything looks great so far. Now let's introduce the next step. For the next step, we are going to now have pumps in place. There's a valve, splitter, where's my pumps? Here's my pump, select. Ideally, you want to pump the next flow rate up to the next distillation column. So I'm just going to connect this stream here to the pump. Introduce another separator. Distillation column, flush column, perfect. I'm just going to place it here. Now I'm going to include the next stream to the second distillation column. The product here we want to achieve acetone connect from the bottom bottom connect so this is going to be acetone distillate of the second distillation column will be used as a recycle stream so we can also include a valve here connect this stream to this valve next stream to this distillation column you will see and notice that this stream looks like it did not connect to the distillation column. To connect it, we will have to edit our column. Edit. If you click on feeds, I'm going to say insert. The second feed will feed at 41, stage 41. Exit. If now I connect the stream to the distillation column, it should connect, perfect. Um, now let's edit all our streams. Ideally, stream number four, the second feed, should not deviate too much from D1 so that we can avoid or we can fill in. So I'm just gonna fill in. We can say we expect to have acetone of 0 0.75, perfect. Acetone stream at the bottom, we wish to achieve almost pure acetone, so I'm going to say 0 0.99. The pressures here, if you don't know much, you are allowed to allow Coco to help you, unless you've done your research very well and you know what you expect. I'm just gonna fill in the fractions here, and I'll let Coco help me filling in the other values. For stream six, which is the distillate two, so I'm just gonna say D2. Here we can say we expect to get a 0 0.65 of methanol. 
we are not expecting too much deviation. This can be the recycled stream and should not deviate too much from the stream six, so 0 0.65, great. Now for the second distillation column, the feed stream here we can say, according to research 41, thermodynamic properties fold them in, specifications. Now this is where we tell Octave what we wish to achieve. And since we want to achieve acetone at the bottom, methanol at the top, we are going to increase the pressure to 30 bar, which is different to 2000 Newton meters squared that we used in the first distillation column, which is roughly about 0 0.02 bar. Solve. Great, now let's see everything solved. Acetone, perfect. At the bottom, we have sulfur for the second distillation column. Methanol for the first distillation column, we have sulfur 995, perfect. Notice the pressures, um, Octave helped us with the pressure um, and the temperature regulations. Recycle streets, great, agreed. So this is our distillation column. It just ran for us. After solving and running our distillation column, this is what are our result. We have the feed entering, which is a mixture of methanol and acetone, separates at a very low pressure of 0 0.02 bar. As a result, we got methanol at the bottom and the distillate, which is acetone, being the higher component at the top ran through a pump to the second distillation column at a very high pressure. Then we achieved acetone at the bottom and methanol at the top. I really, really do hope this makes sense. Anyways, thank you so much for watching.